OK, well, welcome, everybody, to uh, the third in Greenlight series of roundtables. This is the Travel Roundtable. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome everybody here from the travel sector uh, to talk about all the issues to do with search and social uh, in travel uh, today. Um, my name's Chris Bland. I'm the Client Services Director here at Greenlight. Um, and I look forward to hearing who you all are as we go around the table. Anna. I'm Anna O'Brien, and I am the Director of Social Media at Greenlight. I'm Charlie Wakeham, and I'm e marketing executive for Mercury Direct. Emma Bajer, and business development manager for Mercury Direct as well. I'm Warren Cowan, Greenlight CEO. Danny Barrasso, the senior director of e commerce Europe, Middle East, and Africa at Hilton Worldwide. I'm Luke, I'm senior SEO manager for Owners Direct, uh, part of HomeAway. I'm Guido Pollini, and I'm a senior SEO specialist for Expedia. I'm Ronan Ivanu, I'm the SEO specialist for Expedia as well. I'm Matthew Whitesway, um, similar to Chris, Client Services Director at Greenlight. And um, I asked everybody uh, to have a quick think about uh, something that they find stimulating or interesting in, in the travel sector or in the online marketing in particular. So I'll, I'll kick off myself uh, and go forward um, and say so something that I've noticed recently uh, in search, uh, which is the uh, disappearance of uh, TripAdvisor from the so from the search rankings. Uh, it seems that every every time I look around uh, for a different search in a uh, different query in in natural search, I seem where I've, I'm used to seeing TripAdvisor appear in almost every single there's a time category. You for there's a exactly the time you're tripping over yourself in, indeed uh, for for TripAdvisor, and now it doesn't seem to be there. And I don't know. And I would be interested in your thoughts whether this is something to do with the Google Panda updates, which have been happening recently, um, whether that is something to do with, uh, with TripAdvisor. But it's always been, that the site's always been a lot cannier than, than that. It's always managed to kind of work its way in between. The, the, and, and there's nothing desperately wrong about the site. So I just that, that's a new thing that I've noticed in, in travel that I thought was quite interesting. I'm going to go around again this way. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that I find most interesting, obviously, I'm going to take a social slant because that's my, that's my bag. Uh, Google Plus obviously launched Pages recently, and one of the things that I saw on Pages that I kind of find quite interesting is they're using, encouraging brands to use one of the circles as a VIP section for a circle of people that you might want to give advance notice of some type of event. And I'm wondering how this will affect blogger outreach and influential community members outreach and how that might actually systemize that for a brand. Mm. So rather than having to write an email or contact, you actually can set up a forum of people that are consistently <coughs> checking for information um, and, and how that changes the way that whole process is done, which is a pretty big part for the travel industry of getting messages out about obviously hotel quality and things like that. <coughs> uh, for me, it's uh, the growth of mobile. Um, in, I mean, obviously it's been coming around for, for a year or so now, yeah, yeah. Uh, but more and more now people are saying everything's going to be moving to mobile and in a few years time everything we do will be on mobile and how that's going to affect uh, the travel sector especially. I mean I can see people not quite on their Blackberries booking holidays but certainly iPads and tablets, um, but how, that's, how that move is going to happen and what that means for advertising and such and yeah yeah I think definitely worth touching on later on um, I will speak about uh, perhaps like a struggle uh, which we're having at the moment um, as a small business um, is the competition which we face um, online um, in terms of kind of much larger companies <coughs> and um, the issues we have with our brand and just generic keywords which are very important to us and I think that's just something which we struggle with. Yeah, yeah. intense competition. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a couple of things that have actually fascinated me, if you'd indulge me. Um, one is um, the number of people I've spotted that are checking in or using apps to pretty much log their travel activities mm. online and broadcasting, yeah. them, despite the obvious burglary risks that that probably yeah. poses. <laughs> um, but the, the number of people that seem to be willing to share their travel movements and, and the impact that has on, on the people following them and, and seeing the hotels they're staying in, the brands they're traveling with, and so on and so forth. And, and actually, t my other point is, is an intersection of two points, one talking to Danny over here from Hilton, and other listening to uh, Anna's comments about uh, Google+. Plus. And, and the VIP instance and the issues of circles and putting them in circles and, and almost this aspect of social CRM mm. where you've got a traditional CRM discipline of 
databases of customers and all the profiles and their lifetime of transactions that they've conducted with the brand and keeping those people close you can market to them on email and then the idea of also having another se separate group of people that are also in your social spaces in your Facebook in your Google Plus and the idea of that you know, maybe there's the, the, the some point these two things are going to join together or going to need to join together because they're all your database of customers however they have fragmented and however you might choose to communicate with them based on the where they reside in those two systems. And I think building on them, I think that's really interesting. For me, we all work in the experience business. I mean, travel is um, better for me um, than selling insurance or financial services. Not that there's anything wrong with, with going down that line of business, but, but what Warren's has picked up on is, is really close to some projects that we're doing at Hilton. Um, and for me, what fascinates me about the web is, is how social is humanizing the web and how as brands are we connecting with our consumers in a way that adds value and, and um, drives better service. I'm also really interested in the connection between um, the, the growth of video online. To Charlie's point, mobile's growing fast. Video is growing, I think, faster. And how some big brands, travel brands, are missing a real opportunity to use video to enhance and sell the product. So that's an initiative that we're, we're, we're working on at Hilton, which I can share later. Um, <coughs> I would like to back to the first, uh, first conversation we had about Panda, because uh, it reminds me um, also one competitor I was uh, observing many years ago, that was Direct Line Holidays. Mm -hmm. They were everywhere for every keyword first. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. really impressed how they're doing. And I think Panda, Changed a lot of about how our activity looks like now because it's less about la like okay let's load thousand landing pages or two thousand or five thousand let's order content and more content more content yeah. it's more I think uh, Google is working <coughs> more with kind of artificial intelligence showing pages with um, let's say. Uh, where, where you have landing pages with 100 hotels, possibly this page will be higher than landing page with five hotels. Right. Uh, doesn't matter how many backlinks and other activities uh, was done. And I think this is something which this, this can generally this year changed my, my point of view about SEO radi radi radically. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one thing I'm working on in the moment is try to understand the um, effect of the new, go new Google algorithm update, freshness yeah. on travel. Yeah. So for which kind of searches uh, um, freshen is that is uh, affecting travel, mm -hmm. and uh, what we can do to to um, yeah improve our ranking according to this algorithm. Okay. A um, couple of things. I think um, first of all is the um, the video aspect of um, the um, the purchase cycle. Basically, I um, don't know if you all seen this. Um, uh, Google Insights uh, presentation and they actually show that a lot of people uh, start their um, purchase or tra travel from a video so I yeah. guess it's it becomes very important to, to all of us to actually have videos um, clearly uh, presenting a product. The thing is, question is actually how can SEO benefit from uh, these videos? I think that's, that's a big challenge. Another one is, is um, clearly the um, reputation management uh, basically, brands are uh, impacted by uh, uh, basically a lot of things, but um, essentially the social media aspect, people actually tweeting or, or, or blogging about a brand, and obviously they're usually uh, posting comments about bad experience. So clearly, this is something uh, I think we we all facing at some point. Obviously, making sure that our brand is not uh, is not actually seen as. Um, Obviously, a bad brand, but clearly uh, a good one. So that's that's these two aspects. I'm yeah. fascinating. Great, thank you. I think um, working on in online for so long, I think we've all been blessed and almost take for granted the volume and amount of data that we we have access to if we compare ourselves to to the offline channels. And I think one of the the big talking points this year has, has been around attribution, um, and accurately being able to, to look at the, the consumer buying process. You say videos going into into the buying process, but I think as mobile increases, no longer is, is a single person's journey just on one platform. It's going from mobile, they're, they're then on a tablet, on the train, on the way home, 
they're then on their desktop when they get home or on their it laptop. It's just be multi channel. Now it's multi channel. It's multi channel, multi platform. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to understand how um, how companies, how agencies are gonna gonna link those those um, those paths together to understand what the true attribution model is. When it's a single platform, it's quite easy. We, we, we've all probably used attribution modeling to some degree um, over the last year. But when we're looking across different platforms, it, it becomes so, more, so much more complex. And understanding, <laughs> therefore, where you actually put your budgets is becoming even more complex.